Let's do some drywall. Hey YouTubers, are you ready to fix some corner beads? This is a common issue in every house, especially if you have kids, rough kids that play around in the house. All it takes them to do is run into the corner bead with a toy or playing with the dog. Anything will cause a corner bead pop. Usually the corner bead pops on the sides. You may dent the corner bead itself. In this house, it's a round corner bead. We call this three quarter round bull nose. Very common corner bead in newer homes. This repair process is the same with square corner bead or round corner bead. So what we like to do, we like to dig out the popped out edge, get all the old flaky mud out of there. And I like to resecure the corner bead to the framing with drywall screws. I like to do a screw maybe every half inch or so. This resecures the corner bead to the actual framing. Most people think you just put mud over the corner bead and they'll fix it, but if you don't re-secure the corner bead, that popped out edge is gonna eventually reappear. So re-secure it, like I said, every half inch or so, throw a screw in it, that secures it nice and good. Most houses, when they do put on corner bead, they just staple it on and they just put a staple here and there, so that's why the corner bead really pops Like to dig out the corner, look, dig it out, dig it out. Use your six inch knife, get in there and get all the stuff out. Make sure all your screws are set flush, plenty of screws, ready to go. When I get this all ready to go, I like to always follow through with a fiberglass mesh tape. You necessarily don't have to do a fiberglass tape, but if we're gonna go through this much work, we wanna put a fiberglass tape so it never cracks out again. So this will be a strong repair with the fiberglass mesh tape. Just put the fiberglass tape over. You don't want to go past the edge of the corner bead, of course, because we want to coat it. We don't want it sticking out past the corner. Get it nice and fiberglass. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to mix some five minute mud. I'm not going to mix a lot of five minute mud. I'm just going to mix enough to do a Fill in the fiberglass gaps and do a nice first coat over all this area. I use five minute mud. I always keep my five minute muds in a buckets because I do work in the field and I do drive around. Some guys like to work right out of the bag, but I keep mine in buckets with a lid so it preserves it from water getting on it or whatever. So it's a good storage. I keep all my materials in buckets and lids so it lasts a long time. Add some fresh water, you just mix up your hot mud. You want it nice and thick. We're doing a first coat. Just push in the mud, you just push it in so you know it gets inside that grooves of the fiberglass and then just do a nice healthy first coat. Feather the edge. On this corner be bead, there's a ding in the corner bead so I'm just rounding the knife around it and filling in the, the dent. There's special round tools you can use, but if you don't have these special tools, it's the same thing as just pushing the knife and filling in the corner. Basically, it's like working on Bondo on a car. We're just filling in the dents with Bondo. Same principle with drywall mud. We're just filling in the dents with drywall mud. I guess you'd say it's a drywall Bondo because it is a quick set five minute material and it sets up quick kind of like a Bondo, so it's a strong material. But a nice healthy first coat and just take it around the bull nose. Once I get all my mud, I like to clean out my pan and knife. If you don't have a hose around, a simple bucket of water and a sponge technique, this works so you don't have to hook up a hose. I have a hose in my work truck, but sometimes on these little jobs, it's more work than it's worth for me to hook up a hose, disconnect the hose. So I just work right out of a bucket of water that I keep with me on hand. This is a smart idea to have buckets of water with the lid on it, especially what I do because sometimes I go to jobs and there's no water available and I'm ready to go. When I get to a job, I got fresh water ready to mix. Once a five minute mud sets up, about three to five minutes, we feather it out with a sponge. If you're not familiar with this technique, I have several other videos that show you how to work with five minute muds. I'm just slicking out, taking off the extra materials of the five minute muds, pushing it where it needs to go, taking off the excess. As you can see on the corner bead, the dent, the ding dent is filled in. That's the 
point of impact. That's what popped this corner bead. So a little corner ding like that created all this work, but this is the only way to fix it correctly. Both sides, same thing on this one. It has a ding right on the center of it. We filled it in. So I take the extra mud on my knives after I feathered it off and I also use the extra mud almost like a second coat to fill in the ding one more time. I like to work with these five minute muds because as you can see they're easy to work with but you can't let them set up and dry. They're not like a regular joint compound where you let it dry overnight and then turn around and sand it. You actually got to work with these materials as they're setting up with this sponge and six inch knife slick out technique. This is the only way to work with five minutes. My extra mud, see when you have extra mud it just sets up like a rock and then just throw it right in the trash can. I'm mixing up a second coat mud. I don't need a lot of mud. I just need a quarter of a pan. Just mixing enough so I can do a nice second coat. Second coat doesn't have to be heavy. You do your heavy mud work with your first coat. Your second coat's more of a finishing coat to make it nice and perfect and to fill in any deep spots. I always use my 12 inch knife. A lot of guys like to use 8 inch, 12 inch, 10 inch, 14 inch. Just stick with a 6 inch knife, maybe a 10 inch knife or a 12 inch knife like I do. I'm going the opposite direction. I went up and down coating the mud, now I'm going side to side. So that way I know it gets the, the grooves. And that's a nice coat on, around, on a corner bead. Filling in the corner ding. That's second coated and then follow through on the other side. Same thing, just fill in the ding with my knife and then I'm going to go sideways on this to fill it in sideways. You could go up and down, I'm just going the opposite way of my first coat. Same thing here, I'm washing up my second coat mud. You always want to wash up your tools before your hot mud sets up in your pans and knives. It is a five minute mud. Sometimes it can set up in three minutes, sometimes ten minutes. So you just got to work with the materials quickly, get your tools cleaned up as fast as possible. That way you can turn around and get back on the project and slick it out with the six inch knife and the sponge. Always clean your tools when you're done with them. While I'm out here, I'm gonna mix in some regular joint compound that I keep in the bucket. Dump off the water, mix it up. I like to use creamy mud. I always mix it up for every job to make a nice creamy texture mud. I always use a stomper because it's easy to work with. I don't have to pull out drills, pull out all these tools just to mix it up. See how easy those stompers are? Just need a couple scoops of texture. Like I said, this is a regular joint compound. This is not a quick set muds. Some guys will use a quick set muds to texture with, but I don't recommend ever using a quick set mud for texture. I always use a joint compound for my textures. It's mostly the to go materials for all textures. Since I'm in here now, second coat, I'm slicking it out with the sponge, feathering it out with the sponge, taking off the extra materials on the edges, and then just following through, just troweling it down, getting rid of the excess mud. We don't need a big bulge on the wall, we're just putting the materials where it's needed. Same thing, follow through with that ding and fill it in, so that's basically a third coat now on that ding. Same thing with the other side, Hit your edges, clean it up, take off the extra mud where the mud isn't needed. It's easier to do it now. You can just leave the mud and turn around and sand it the next day, but most of my jobs are repairs and we don't come back the next day. So we feather our edges and we make it as minimal sanding as possible for the painter. So we just feather it out, feather it out, take off the extra five minute mud. If you did use regular joint compound, you would just do the same process, but it would be overnight. You have to let the first coat dry overnight, second coat dry overnight, and texture. I'm going to take some regular joint compound and do another coat over this ding. So now basically you got three, four coats of mud on it. It's nice and filled. This is a skip trowel on this wall, so skip trowels are easy. No matter what texture you have to do, the process of coating is the same. The texture is just a cosmetic finish. So depending on your project and the texture type, then you would match your texture. Most jobs are smooth wall. Out here we have a lot of different textures. We have skip trials, Santa Fe's, 
knockdowns, orange peels, splatters, popcorn. So every job's different. I like these newer homes, homes that are 20, 30 years old or newer because they always have these skip trial textures. It's a new easy texture that's done by hand so we don't have to pull out the spray rig. I'm gonna just feather out the texture, blend it in, help blend it in. It goes into the existing. You necessarily don't have to take the repair out this far, but I'm in a customer's home and I give them their money's worth. I like to feather it out and give a good job. Follow through with the other side, same thing, fill in the corner bead, just filling in that ding. That's getting a fresh coat of joint compound over the hot muds. That makes a nice, perfect finish. Same thing here, I see what direction the skip trial is going, and I just skip trial it. Skip, skip. This is a regular joint compound I'm using. There are other type of textures you can use. They're powder form, but you have to mix the powder, let them set, remix them, strain them. So on these jobs, when I'm working in the field doing smaller projects, I just use a regular joint compound that I thin down. If you're not familiar with thinning down, joint compounds, I have other videos you can watch that show these the process of thinning it down for texture or first coat or second coat. Skip trial, just blending it in and that's it.